Hey everyone, my name is Whitney and this is my YouTube channel Whit Makes where I share things that I make. So today I have some sewing and some knitting. I have one finished object, lots of stuff on my needles, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about spring capsule because I am starting to create mine. <laughs> so that's what we'll talk about at the end. So my name is Whitney. I live in Colorado up in the mountains and I have three kids and they keep me very, very busy. So any spare time I am usually knitting or sewing or sleeping. That's it. <laughs> that's much I, do. I do some reading. Oh, I do have some books that I want to share with you at the end as well. So let's get started. I'm going to, let me show you what I'm wearing. First of all, nothing is handmade, but they are two new things to me. So first I got this t-shirt for my graphic tee for my spring capsule from Madewell. I just, um, it's pink and yellow. It's my favorite. And then I got these pink pants, which are fantastic. Um, I love them so much. <laughs> so I am dressed springy today. The sun is shining. It's still pretty cold outside. I'm just done with winter. I'm done with winter clothes and I'm going to dress for spring from now on. So nothing handmade today, but, um, feeling, feeling the spring vibes. So let's get started. I have one thing that I sewed that I want to share with you that I finished. Okay. I got bright pink pants on today and I got these bright blue pants to show you. So this is the pattern V9302. This is the same pattern I made those plaid pants for my winter capsule um, that I showed a few months ago. It's the same exact pattern. I did have pockets on this one. I will try and put in a picture of me wearing these. Um, they are wide leg. There's a few versions you can do cropped. You can do uh, kind of like a tuxedo, what do you call this, strip on the side. But they just have this great wide curved waistband, um, a zip up the back, pockets or no pockets, depending on you want, a couple of pleats in the front and then darts in the back. I make the straight size 12 and they just fit me really well. They're long enough. They fit my waist. I love this pants pattern. I wore these last week, I guess, or the week before, uh, just with white sneakers and uh, I think my no frill sweater. So colorful, so bright, gorgeous. Love, love these. I know that I guess I'm just feeling, I'm feeling the bright colors. I was going to say, I know that might seem like not a great, like everyday pant, but I love them and I've been wearing them, like reaching for them quite a bit. So I made that out of a wool crepe that I picked up at Minerva and they have a bunch of different colors. It was a great for that pattern. Really enjoyed. So 10 out of 10. That is my tried and true pants pattern. Now I do have coming up, I'm going to branch out. I have two trouser patterns I want to try. And then one jeans pattern that uh, I want to do the Dawn jeans. I want to make them in purple though. Am I going too crazy with my, <laughs> I'm going to have a rainbow of pants. Uh, but I do want to try the Dawn jeans because they seem like they would be kind of like this, like the high-waisted flared. Yeah. So we'll have some more pants coming up, but that um, again, I always forget the number 9302 V9302. I will link everything that I can below. Last time I went to link this pattern, it was still on the something delightful website. This is an older, very easy both pattern. So I don't know like how much longer it will be there. Um, but I love it. So I will link it if I can find it and I will link to that beautiful fabric that I got at Minerva. Speaking of beautiful fabric, my next make, oh yeah, there you go, is going to be out of this. So I have two weddings coming up that I am attending and I have rented some dresses just now. Like they're, I just got the notification that they're on their way from Newly that I, I wanted some choices because I'm not quite sure the vibe. <laughs> So, but I was thinking I might make myself one. So I got this beautiful fabric from Stylemaker Fabrics. I think it's a voile. Uh, 
but I just, I like that it has this kind of peachy background. And then we've got the oranges and the navies. There's some pink, that teal. I just think this is so pretty and kind of different. I don't know. I was drawn to this print and I feel like when you are drawn to a print, you should get it. And I think the dress I'm going to try and make is V9343. I call this the dirty dancing dress because it reminds me of that white dress that she wears in that movie. I think I'm going to make the a little bit longer version. Well, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. It has this plunging neckline, but it does have this back. It's not an open back. So I feel like, and I think that would be easy if it was too revealing to uh, modify that a little bit. And I think having the back makes it not so sexy. Like if it was just the fabric, which I think is how it is in Dirty Dancing. Um, that's, a, that's, that's a pretty sexy dress, which I am not opposed to, but I do think this would be a little bit more wearable with that back. So fitted, unlined dress with length variations, back zipper, hook and eye, pleated bodice, circle skirt with stitched hem and pockets. I don't know, this might be cute. I'm gonna try it. I think I'm gonna cut this out this afternoon and work on that tomorrow. So that's what I have coming up. I also have ordered some fabric and I have some fabric that are going, I have some ideas for, for my spring capsule that I will share in a separate video when I get those fabrics. So that's all my sewing. I don't have a lot of time to sew. And so I'm trying to be very picky in what I'm making that it's something that either I will wear the heck out of or they just absolutely love, love, love. So that's where we are with that. Now for knitting, last week was spring break. So I brought four projects with me. I finished half of one, but I wanted to show you. My mom got me, it's called this Yarn Boss bag. I think she just got it off Amazon. Again, I'll link it if I can. But she got this for me for my birthday. So it's got all these pockets on the outside. It zips to close. It has a nice long handle and then also just a little sturdy handle we've got you can stick your needles out of there i believe it's meant to carry one project at a time but i stuffed all four it has this removable divider which is really nice so i have all my projects in there and it's just really sturdy this was a great road trip bag because i could just put it at my feet and pick up whatever project i wanted to do we went to california for spring break so went to San Diego. I think it's a, how long did it take us to get there? 16 hour drive, somewhere around there. We'll say 15 and a half. Um, so it was a long drive. So we take two days and I was so happy that I had my knitting because I did a lot. I can't really read in the car very well. Um, and knitting, I just, it was fun. It was perfect. So the thing that I finished was one sock. These socks always just do not look cute off the foot. But this is the Andrea Mallory's Bear Paw sock. So it's the DRK everyday sock basically, but in a DK weight. So I held two strands of yarn together and I am making the size women's medium. And this is for my mom. I've decided to make her a pair of cozy socks. I was thinking I would make them for her for Mother's Day, but I actually think I'm gonna see her at Easter and I'm gonna like give her a little cozy present. So these socks, I've made a pair. Um, my pair were too big. So I think I did a good job of like measuring and figure out these fit my foot pretty perfectly. She has a little bit bigger foot than mine. So I think these are gonna be perfect for her. And then I didn't do it quite as tall as the pattern said, because I got major yarn barf happening with the yarn being pushed down and pulled whatever. And so it was getting all tangled up and I had to break the yarn and I, I tried it on and I was like, you know what? That's a good mid ankle length. So I will have to be sure and measure that and count my rows for the other, for the next sock. But anyway, um, this is a great pattern. It's just this rib knit sock. 
they are thick. I mean, it's a DK weight sock in rib in a rib stitch. So I don't know that you would wear these. Like I wouldn't wear them. I don't wear them with boots or sneakers or anything, but I do wear them around the house all the time. They're so cozy. And I think my mom will really appreciate that. Some of y'all might like the ribbed thick socks. I was actually thinking I did throw mine on for like my snow boots. I'll wear them. Um, but otherwise they're just, they're a little too thick, but this is a great pattern. I love this pattern. It comes together really easily. So I think I got, I think I finished this one. I can't remember on the, on the trip there, if I finished this one or right when we were starting back, I think it was right when we were starting back. So I, finish this one and then I immediately cast on the second one and I've been working on this. So I will take this like in the car with me and when I'm in carpool um, or if I'm waiting to pick up the kids from whatever sport they're in, I will just knit on these. So I'm about a quarter of the way through the foot and then they just, it's pretty easy. They fly. So I will be finishing these up this week and then I can block them and get them to her when I see her at Easter. So that is my half that's my hoe for the, for the, <laughs> for the week. And then my other big project that I've been working on is this one and this yarn, I'm sorry, this blue yarn was the December farmer's daughter fiber. I think it was the December one. Yeah. Yes. It was the December farmer's daughter fiber. Uh, sock subscription for their sock squad. I don't remember what base this was, but lucky for me, this is right here. This is the sock squad two medicine. It's their highwood sock, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and it's 400 yards for a hundred grams. So I was just holding it double and it is this really pretty, maybe, oh, let's do the toe so you can see the blues in there. Anyway, I thought that would be fun. I'm telling y'all, I'm going to get, I'm going to be a sock knitter. I think this summer I might just knit a ton of socks. I really, <laughs> I want to get the fit down. I want to, I love the idea of like gifting socks. I like, feel like there are certain people in my life who would love hand knit socks. So anyway, sock number one. And then my sweater. Okay, let's move on. This is my next big project. This is, look at this green. I just split for sleeves last night. So this is the It's Not a Sweatshirt by Knitting for Olive. And I am using Santa Scarn Pure Gint in this beautiful, I think it's jelly bean green. Perfect, jelly bean green, are you kidding me? It is so bright and vibrant. Um, and a fun cast on for March. So this, if you don't already know, is 100% Norwegian wool. It's my first time using it. I fell in love with this yarn when I saw it knit in a different sweater on like a Santa Scarn. I think it was their spring catalog. Maybe it was their winter catalog that everyone was trying to get a hold of. I just wanted that green yarn. So this is going to be just like a sweatshirt and it's gorgeous. I am loving it so far. I'm making the second size. Um, I think it's small is what she calls it, they call it. And it has beautiful raglan shaping, a thick folded neckband. I think I prefer those. We'll see when we finish it. But yeah, I'm just plugging away on this. I would like to, I think I'm gonna do the body until I finish this and then do a sleeve to kind of break it up and then finish this. So I think I could finish this in the next couple weeks now that I'm on the body. Um, and I'm really enjoying working on this. I finished watching Last of Us, finally finished it last night. And I got like an, almost two inches done. <laughs> so um, this is my good, this is my TV watching sweater. I am ready to start Succession. I wanted to finish Last of Us and now I can watch Succession. This will be like my green, like money Succession sweater. <laughs> but it's a basic top down raglan sweater. I don't think there's anything too wild about it, but um, I'm really enjoying working on that. So that's kind of my main 
that's to finish that other sock and then to work on that sweater are kind of what I'm focusing on right now. But I also started, I can't remember if I showed this to you last time or if I had just cast it on. This is the Coffee Run Collar by Samantha Gurin. Gurin? And I'm almost done with the back. Loving this texture. And it's just knits and pearls, but it's a very, there we go. Ah, there we go. It's this beautiful texture. So it's going, I have a little bit more to do and then I'll do one side, the other side, and then I think you do the full front and then the neck band. I am finding this a little bit tedious. It was tedious, especially working on the ribbing of the sock. Like I didn't want another project that was ribbing, so I, I didn't pull this up last week very much, but it's a really easy pattern. Um, and once you get going, it's easy to memorize, but it, it, I am a little slow with it. So I'm just taking my time and when it's finished, it's finished, but this is almost the back and it's gonna be just the turtleneck and the front and then the back. So I think it'll be great with like a lightweight coat or something this spring. And if I don't get it finished by spring, it's gonna be cold here for a while. So I think I'll be able to wear this at least once this spring. But if I don't finish it, I'll just keep working on it and I'll wear it this fall. I love this color. So I'm using Woolberry Fiber. This is her berry sock base. I don't remember the color, but I don't think you can get it anyway. And this is Knitting for Olive uh, Mohair. And I will link to my Ravelry project page as well that links to this specific yarn. But I am loving the color this is giving. And it's very soft. This is, this feels really good to work on. It's just, it's not quite as mindless for me as just the plain stockinette back and forth. So I do have to kind of focus on that, but it's, it's fun. I like it. And then my final project that I cast on the day before we left because I was like, what if I finish two sweaters and a sock and a pair of socks <laughs> and I need one more thing? I know. So I cast on the Copeland socks from the book Ready Set Sock and I am using the January Farmer's Daughter Fiber sock set, which are these two colors. I feel like my lighting is kind of weird in here today. So I just cast on and did like started the cuff this and then I have this actually came with the December sock set so I'm kind of keeping it one sock might have the dark blue and one sock might have the white or I might do like cuff toe cuff toe I don't know I don't think I have enough um, for how much I need for these socks but let me show you this is from Pom Pom it is the ready set socks I picked this up recently and I kind of just want to work my way through it and get good at socks, like I said. So the very first sock is the Copeland sock, named after the beautiful ballet dancer, Misty Copeland. And what I love about it, there's a, I think every sock has a sock weight, a four ply sock, and then a DK weight sock, which is kind of cool. But there are quite a few variations that you can do the amount what ribbing pattern you're doing, how tall your ribbing is. There's all different heel options. So I, I can't remember exactly now. I did write it down and I will tell you when I have a finished sock, but I'm trying one of those. So I'm following this. Um, it's basically a vanilla sock pattern. I mean, it's ribbing, you know, foot, toe, heel, like it's, whatever, but uh, I was gonna play around with the different variations. And then as you go through the book, they get more difficult. So I'm gonna play around and I will absolutely share as I get going on that. So I'm not gonna work on this one though until I finish my bear paw socks. But I do, this is another blues and purples that um, I'm doing this on nine inch circulars, which I do like, I will say I'm getting better at magic loop. It's weird, the more you practice something, the better you get at it. Who would have thought? 
So those are the four projects on my needles and what I'll be working on. I don't anticipate starting anything else until I talk to you again. So that is all I have for that. I feel like I flew through this, but I don't have too much to say on anything until I finish some stuff. So those are my knitting projects. That's my sewing. I am working right now on getting my spring capsule together. So I subscribe, I'm a member of the Style Circle with Everyday Style School. And she puts out a capsule guide for every season. And Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery got me hooked on these a couple years ago, last year, two years ago. And I've done them and not done them. And I just feel that the seasons that I have used the capsule, even as a very loose guide, those are the things that I've made that I love. Those are the things that if I've bought new stuff that I've loved. And they're the clothes I really like to wear. So I'm doing the spring capsule. I was going to do a whole video showing what, like what I'm bringing in from my closet and I filmed it and it was so boring to edit that I was like, this is going to be so boring to watch. So I'm not going to do that. I am going to share the plans of what I plan to make. I am trying to post on my blog every Friday, my outfits. I'm trying to take a picture, not like super stylized or anything, but of my different outfits, just so I can see what I'm actually wearing and like what I like and um, how it looks and also share with you how I'm wearing my clothes. I love, I love watching people make clothes and hearing them talk about it, but I always get kind of sad when people are like sharing their, what I made in 2022 and there's like four sweaters and they never wear them or they're like, I didn't wear this at all. Um, I want to wear the clothes that I make. So for me, these capsule guides are really helpful in making sure that's the case. And like I said, my time is pretty limited with, especially with sewing. I feel like knitting, I can kind of take around with me, but for sewing, it's pretty limited. So I really want to make sure that the things I'm making work in my closet and that I really want to wear them. So that's where I am with the capsule guide. I will talk about it again. Like I said, I'll show my plans and then maybe I'll find a way to kind of share. I just, it's, I don't think it's interesting to just hold up all the pieces. Also, I, I don't want to give away the capsule. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't decided. I might do something on Instagram. You can follow me there. Um, but I've been really reading and watching a lot of stuff about sustainable fashion and sustainable closets. And uh, for me, the capsule guide really helps me be so intentional with my purchases and my making. So I'm really loving it. I'm loving the colors. There's lots of orange and pink and there's some blue and it's making me feel very springy. I feel like spring and fall are big transit. Like those are big seasons. I feel like summer I kind of wear the same thing every day. Winter, I'm all bundled up. But I feel like fall and spring, you can have lots of layers and play with color. I bought a lot of t-shirts. I kind of revamped. All my t-shirts were looking really sad in the collar and like in the armpit. So I that's mainly what I bought was I upgraded to some new t-shirts and um, some new shoes. I got some new shoes for spring. So that's what I'm kind of working on with my capsule and everything. And I will be happy to share it, but I just don't want it to be, I don't want it to be boring. I don't want it to be like you need to buy or something like that. So I'll just share as I'm making and what I'm wearing and incorporating that somehow in these videos when I get a chance to film them. All right. So that's the spring capsule guide. I will link it below. I did join their affiliate program which means that I get a commission if you click on it and you buy the guide or anything off the website. And I just did that because I really enjoy these products and I'm gonna talk about them. So if I'm gonna to link to it, I might as well get a commission off of it. But um, otherwise I don't really um, link to stuff to like influence you to buy it. But for me, these capsule guides are really, really helpful. All right, so that's that. Quick little life update. We went to San Diego last week and it was lots of fun. We did all the stuff. I got to see my brother and his wife and they're three month old. She just turned three months old and it was just wonderful. We had a wonderful time as a family. 
I love California. So it was cold and rainy, oh, cold. <laughs> Uh, we were not cold. <laughs> we were very happy with the weather. It was perfect, actually. There was one day that was torrential rain that we couldn't do anything, but every other day it was kind of like a shower would pass through, but it was nice. We went to the zoo. We went to the Belmont. Is that what it's called? The Belmont uh, Boardwalk, I think is what you call it. It's right on the ocean, as the name implies, but it's like a little fair kind of thing. It was so much fun. All three kids loved it. And that's how we wrapped up the trip. So that was a lot of fun. So this week I'm kind of getting back in the groove and um, yeah, I, like I said, we finished Last of Us. I very much enjoyed that show. I'm not a big zombie show movie gal, but I loved this this the series. Um, we're also watching Dairy Girls, which if I haven't influenced you to watch this show, I really, really want you to. The third season came out a few months ago, maybe even like at the end of the summer. And it's just fantastic. We kind of saved, so we watched the end of Last of Us and we, we just wanted something a bit more lighthearted before we got ready for bed. Um, just like, you know, end of the world zombies, kind of like gets you ramped up before falling asleep. So we watched an episode of Dairy Girls and it is so funny. Those actors are just, they're fantastic. So I highly recommend Dairy Girls on Netflix. Um, and then we're going to start Succession, which I'm pumped about. And then I guess there's a new Ted Lasso I need to watch. And then everyone's talking about shrinking. So those are all on my list, but I'm a one show at a time gal for the most part, mainly because I, we don't have a lot of time to watch TV with kids activities in the evening. We watch lots of Bob's Burgers. The kids and Chris are watching Andor together. So I get like my one night that's like, I get to pick what we're watching. So Succession is next. And then I wanted to share with reading. I finished, I mentioned it last time. I finished Everyone in my family has killed someone. I listened to this one. It was delightful. And I recommended it to my sister-in-law because she has uh, like teenage girls. And I was like, this is totally one you can put on. There's, it's, there's a murder, it's a murder mystery, but there's no, it's not any like gross gore or anything too dark. And there's no like weird sex scenes or anything. Just like stuff that you, <laughs> If your kid's sitting in the back seat, it's like, oh my God, I know that my parents would listen to books on tape and sometimes I would be like, oh, ah. um, it was a different time. So anyway, this is one that you could definitely have on with, I mean, I don't know that your younger kids would want to listen to it with you, but if you had it on, they're not, you're not going to scar them, but it was very enjoyable and it was very much an homage to kind of like Agatha Christie type murder mysteries and it was really cute. So I enjoyed listening to that one and I listened to that one a lot while I was knitting and sewing. Uh, that was some books I can listen to while I make and some are too, um, I need to focus a little bit more, but that one I enjoyed listening to. I just started A Room with a View. I've never read that. So I'm not sold on this narrator though, but I'm gonna give it a shot. It's a pretty short book, I think. So I'm reading that, I just started that one today. And then I finished, started and finished on our trip, Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Might be the best book I read all year. It is heavy. <laughs> it is a bit dark, but it's absolutely beautiful. It is inspired by David Copperfield. So it very much deals with orphans, poverty. Um, there's a lot of drug abuse. And it's based in like present day in the Appalachia area in a few different communities. And it is just fantastic. The characters are so beautiful. And I finished it on Sunday, Sunday morning. And I was just like, this was perfect. But I did start a bit of a lighthearted book. I started Lunar Love um, for a little bit of like a, just a fun romance to 
get a break from Demon Copperhead, but it's, I highly recommend it. It is absolutely beautiful. So you can follow me. I always post on Goodreads. That's how I keep track of what I'm reading. And then I also have an Instagram, Wit Reads and Reads, where I've been trying to put what I read on there. So I think that's it for me. We're coming in right at 30 minutes. Way to go, Whitney. I hope that you have some sunshine wherever you are, that you are feeling some spring vibes, and that you have some fun stuff either on your needles or on your cutting table, and that you get some time to make in. I plan, well, I'm not really sure. I might be back next week and just if my fabric comes in and tell you my spring plans. And then maybe the next week we'll come back and see where we are with all of this stuff. Until next time, happy making.